Alrighty, hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new here, um, this is basically going to be me just talking over my thought process on this match, the most recent Hakuryu game um, video that I just uploaded a couple days ago, and I've been getting a lot of comments of, you know, just a lot of questions, just asking just, what do I do in this situation? Why did I pre-drop this? Why did I strike this target? So I feel, I feel like it's going to be a really good time to start a new series. Um, I'm going to be naming it something like breakdown or, or post commentary analysis, something like that. Right. And, uh, we're just going to be going along, um, this match It's going to be the actual raw video, not the edited one that I uploaded a couple days ago. It's going to be the raw file that I took from my live stream. And we're just going to be going through, try to skip out on the more boring parts and just focus on the main, on the main, um, action and the parts that really made us win this game pretty much. Because a lot of people say that the rework carriers um, in the current state don't really have much game impact as they did with RTS or um, compared to other classes like a battleship getting proper positioning, nuking a ship off the screen, or a destroyer perma spotting or getting a really good, um, really good angle to really use those torpedoes and threaten the whole the whole flank pretty much if left uncontested. So I'm going to be trying to go over this game, um, really try to put emphasis on exactly what I did, why I did um, this play or that play. So here we go. Um, the first step, the first thing I really look for uh, when, when I get into a carrier game is the matchmaker. We're not really, I don't really look at specifically the, uh, the tiers of what exactly i'm going to be facing like what is eight you know tier eight what is tier nine in this case um you know we do see there's an ebookie there's both tier eight destroyers on on both sides so a lot of people tend to look at this kind of thing but mainly what i'm more focused on is what is the other carrier that i'm facing in this case it's a hakuryu and then what are the battleships that my team has and what they have next can be the radar that they have and what we're lacking in this case, we only have one radar on our team, and they have two radars, so they're a threat to our destroyers. And then we're looking at what kind of destroyers do we have, and what do they have? We have a Lightning and a Kagado. They have a Akizuki and a Kagado. And pretty much it's going to be more of like a skill-based um, for the destroyers, unless they just somehow eat torpedoes or get caught out of position with a radar or something or a carrier spotting. But that's the first thing that I generally look at uh, when it comes to any type of match that I do play carriers in. So my priority target will generally be something like um, what I prefer to, to focus down when I'm playing a Hakuryu or anyone with very strong AP bombers or torpedo bombers. It's going to be the island huggers and trying to predict how the other team are going to be playing just based off what I'm looking at here. So instantly, I'm going to be looking at the Masfa. And a lot of Masfas out there, they tend to run the Hydro over the FAA because the biggest um, thought, the biggest rumor out there or the mentality that a lot of players have, um, which is a big, um, I would say an in-game inside joke, is AA is very weak and the FAA doesn't do anything. And as much of a uh, joke that the community makes of this, the FAA, when used properly, can actually do a lot of work. And if the Musfa plays his strings right, and he does bring the FAA, then he can really hold back a carrier strike. But a lot of the time, you'll see because it's random battles or everything is more of like a solo queue environment, you won't really see any type of team play or any type of coordination with the FAA usage or or any, any you know anti air in general, and um, so we just gotta watch out for what this Musfa is gonna be doing. If he is gonna be island hugging, then that's gonna be really good for us because we can use our AP bombers and any type of spotting or permanent spotting that the Musfa is affected with. It's a huge, a huge threat to him. Uh, just because there's HE that can burn him down, um, there's you know the threat of overmatch on his icebreaker, all that kind of stuff, right? All that kind of stuff just adds up. 
Next is going to be the Salem and the Worcester that I'm looking at. Mainly looking at the cruisers for the most part, um, because once you remove the cruisers, you really give you open up a lot of room for the for your battleships and also your destroyers because they're the more utility based class. They can you know they're more of like if you think about it, they're more of like a support ship in quotations support because they bring the most utility. Right, they have the highest DPM. They can have the highest radar um, capabilities, hydroacoustic, AA. Okay, all that kind of stuff. So usually, when you focus on uh, when you focus on cruisers, you'll generally be getting help from your battleships as well, and you can create that type of crossfire potential and really threaten um, threaten these these guys over here. So, looking at Musfa, we're going to be watching where the Worcester and the Salem are going to be positioned at. So that'll That'll affect of how we go about our our flights, um, you know, our entire flight path, and even our carrier positioning. The battleships, I don't really care. It's more of when you look at the battleships, it's like, oh, which which battleship has the weakest anti-air that I can focus down and farm? Um, in this case, going to be the GK and the FDG, and the destroyers. Not much to really worry about here, unless they're like Holland, Smallin, Ragnar, that kind of thing really really strong anti-air ships but in this case we don't have to worry about that which is good if you are facing something like that like a holland or anything you know anything insane continuous aa 100 percent aa hits and stuff like that um i would say the best way to go about it is first try to get if you can try to get your destroyer um to spot them or in worst case scenario you have to face check them and once they once they do get spotted try to take a a different flight path instead of just flying through them to get to your target main reason being is because as much of, of you know as much of a meme of how how many planes you have in your reserves every single plane counts for the mid game and the late game and if you just throw your planes away you know without any care in the world that's really going to hurt you later on in case this does become a 20 minute match right and so now we're in the match and I immediately got hit with the first question of why do I pre-drop so many times when I'm playing the Hakuryu? Especially the, the torpedo bombers, right? You have 12 planes total, right? You have six strikes, each with two planes, and this is a lot of strikes you can pull off, right? And this is a lot of potential damage that you can inflict on the enemy team. But for me, what I like to do at the start of the game, or even when I'm just, you know, in mid-game, early game, that kind of thing, I like to pre-drop three times. Um, mainly because you don't need these many planes in the very beginning. You, you will rarely need these many planes even in mid-game. Because your heal can only last for so long, right? And once this heal goes down, because how little HP your planes have, you're going to be losing your planes one by one and there's no point of having all of these planes in your in your flight because you're never going to get most of them off so what i do here is i go straight down mid i fly straight down mid i, I drop a fighter to keep the spotting on any of these sides just in case the fighter spots anyone right and then i'm going to be immediately trying to focus the gk this is why i'm turning to the left but then i see the ibuki and the ibuki is very squishy it is a very, very, very vulnerable ship, and they have to play very carefully. And I, when I find this Ibuki to my right, I immediately focus onto that ship because it is very easy to kill um, a ship like that. Ibuki, Zhao, you know, light cruisers, heavy cruisers of weak AA, um, weak armor. That's why I immediately notice her, and then I start turning, and I decide to go straight, straight for her. Now, I pop the heal as well the moment that I start my strike, mainly because I'm, I'm afraid that one of these flags is going to be spawning unluckily because it is in North Carolina. I do have to worry about that. Um, when you eat a flag with Hakuryu, it is pretty scary because um, of just how little HP your planes have. And we're going to be going over how I use the heal this game uh, in a bit. But uh, I do get my strikes off on the Ibuki. She's not really paying attention. She's not really paying attention, even though she is looking at my direction. Um, and I do use my engine boost to start up my next strike. Now, if you, if you did notice here, I lose a plane, right? And the re this is the reason why I like to do three pre-drops and then have three, uh, three attacking flights left for my usual strike, so I can strike twice in the very beginning. So 
one strike is for actually getting my attacks off. And then two more planes are used for a kind of like a um, a just in case situation where I do lose those planes. I still have my last full attack squad that I can use. So here I do lose this plane. And now I have my full attacking strike and I, I do get my two planes off. So that's why I like to do that kind of little bit of a pre-drop um, moment. And now the Hakuryu heal or rather the IJN tech tree heal in general like the Shokaku who's the Hakuryu and now soon coming to live servers it's going to be the Sekiryu which is the super carrier they all have a special heal which is two minute cooldown the usual heal for carriers is three minutes and what this means is you can really use this to your advantage just like how you would use um kind of like a rotation system if you guys ever watch any of my any of my um, United States videos, I focus a lot on rotations. And what this means is using your torpedo strikes, uh, your torpedo bombers first, rotating over to another squadron. In this case, it's going to be my AP bombers. And then once I go back to my torpedo bombers, my heal is going to be up because it's just a fa you know, it's one minute faster than all the other heals that any carrier has. So this is what I'm really focusing on. What I did just now was try to spot out that Worcester, drop a fighter. So that my other battleships can have a cross shot on it, but immediately goes dark. So now, at least now I know that he's going to be positioned at this island. All right. Now my main focus is going to be trying to get, trying to get that, that Ibuki out of the way. And once we push him back, then we can, we can focus out that North Carolina. Because so North Carolina is not only a lower tier battleship, which is, um, you know, it's less of an AA ship that we have to deal with. But it is also very vulnerable because of how she's positioned right now. If you look at our team positioning, they're all pretty, you know, they're all pretty aggressive. And our the the enemy's North Carolina, if she gets caught like this and she tries to she tries to game return, she's gonna be brought to all my all my ships here and potentially incoming, you know, the our our destroyers torpedoes. So really trying to get this North Carolina out of the picture is gonna be very beneficial for us. It's very easy too. Notice how she is stuck at a crossfire right now. She can't turn broadside or else she's going to get, you know, she's going to show her citadel she's going to get nuked. So this opens me up to go for a strike. And I do believe I land, the, I think, two citadels here. One citadel, okay. So there's that. Now there is, there is the incoming torpedoes from my destroyer, and so, as I predicted, so that's good. And while I'm, whenever I start up a new strike here, I'm always looking at the other side. <clears throat> excuse me, the other side of the map. I'm looking at a cap, which is what I want to focus down, but I'm also looking at the right side. See how the other cap is doing. I'm not just focusing on, I'm not just focusing on who I want to keep farming damage, you know, farming damage, this, farming damage, that. I'm really trying to impact the game in such a way so that I can help my, help my flank win the, the objective, and then we can focus on the other side. That's the, that's pretty much how I play carriers. I don't, focus battleships all the time just so i can get you know as much as as much of a you know damage stat as possible um but as you see i did have my heal just now so there's that i do a chain strike on trying to get this ibuki out as well she's playing very aggressively for a ship um that, that she brought to the match um uh, we do get a flood on the ibuki so this prompts me to focus her one more time and notice how the North Carolina, she's also caught bow in because of our crossfire that we that we provided for our uh, for our team. Massachusetts finishes her off. I get this easy um, double strike on you know uh, double torpedo strike on the Ibuki, so she's gonna go down here very shortly. I she does go dark, so she's healing up right now, which is fine. Now during this this stage, I'm again looking at the other the other flank. Everyone is dark. So this is going to be kind of scary. So I'm kind of, I'm always like worrying, like how hard is the other side going to be losing? Because I don't run any any mods to show like my team's HP, their HP, that kind of stuff. So I'm mainly just looking, you know, trying to see how my team is posi positioned, how they're positioned. Now in this one, I was going to go after the North Carolina, but I noticed Ibuki is bow in yet again, not learning her lesson, and now she's just stuck here. She's just reversing. Gives me an easy kill. Uh, lucky RNG on the AP bombers, and we actually land three bombs and two citadels. So 
Once the Ibuki goes down here, uh, that pretty much just means we just want the fight. We, we, we want the A side. Again, I am pre-dropping yet again because I don't need all these strikes. I don't, I don't like to have more than what I need. There is a the potential of, yes, I can do more chain strikes with this one flight here. But honestly, I was, I was more worried about late game, mid game, late game. Because the other side, if these ships properly position, they can kill my, my lightning and then they can push all these ships out. Because these guys are running away. They're starting to be kiting away. Um, FTG is rotating over because A side lost just so heavily, right? So I'm more, more so looking into the kind of play it safe for the mid game. Now, in this situation right here, we're just farming at this point, nothing to really do, we're trying to get this side to, to just clear out of all enemy ships so we can rotate over. Now, my ship's positioning, what this helps me do is it saves me from any incoming, any rushing destroyers. And also, if I get spotted, if my carry gets spotted, then that means the enemy destroyers is going to be coming up through here, through this passageway, right, in front of me. Because that's the only way that they can spot me. So, th so this position is very strong for this kind of scenario, for this kind of situation. Um, it lets me know, it lets me detect the enemy destroyers without having to send any of my planes there. That's, that's one thing to keep note of, your, uh, your ship's positioning and how you can indirectly spot another um, ship without having to send your planes over. So now that we won A side very heavily, I switch over to D cap. And what I'm trying to look for here is, where's the Worcester? The Worcester was dark this entire time. Where's the Salem? And then where's the Akazuki? Those three ships are the biggest threats on this side. The Musfa, I don't really have to worry about because he's going to die eventually. Right, he's all the way over here alone by himself. There's a Bismarck that can shoot him. Montana can lob shots over this island once he gets in position. Colbert can, I believe, Colbert can if he goes a little bit further back, he can start shooting the Musfa if he gets spotted. So I'm not really worried about him. I'm more so worried about the AA ships. So there's the Worcester, there's the Akazuki, and then there's the Salem. So I'm like, okay, Salem most likely has the FAA because you know just expect the the worst. Worcester pops his DFA right now, so I could barely get any strikes off on that GK. So now I learn my lesson. Who has who who has the FAA? Who doesn't? Uh, Worcester just used it, so it's still active. So I'm going to send my rockets here. I don't want to send my torpedo bombers because it's uh, there's no point, right? There's Worcester's DFA is still active. Akazuki is roaming in the area, so I might as well just use this time to relax and trying to try to reset a little bit. Trying to let my planes re uh, regenerate uh, in the reserves and um, just use my rockets as a quick in between to spot out that that Worcester again, just in case there's any type of incoming crossfire from my from my battleship that's pushing mid right now, and also trying to find that Akizuki yet again. So just just trying to keep updating your team with the information. If just brief spotting of the destroyer is going to be very beneficial. Now I find that the FTG is very much alone here and also my Rupert is pushing up as well so I'm going to be trying to support him just a little bit and notice here I do have five planes in my reserves for my torpedo bombers and I have a full flight of torpedo bombers as well and I still pre-drop I just pre-drop once or I pre-drop twice um, mainly because I still don't know how this game is going to be turning out this is still anyone's game once the enemy team starts spreading out these ships, they can really turn this game around because they they just have to kill my Rupert and then they could just rotate over because they have this cap, right? They know where the where my team are, yeah. So I'm just playing it safe, uh, safe right now. But we need to remove this FDG. He is a threat to my Rupert and also my my uh, Johan de Witt. So this is me just rush, you know, trying to rush and kill him, send him down. If he doesn't DC, if he gets a flood, doesn't DCP it, he's pretty much dead. But a lot of the games that I play carriers in, it's not really me trying to power farm, get some in insane damage um, stats, right, and upload it to YouTube. This is just a game. This is my first game of the stream, by the way, on, on Saturday. And this just happened to be a 200, I think, 40k game. It just happened, right? But this game really shows, like, um, targets and trying to figure out where is the best way to send your planes. So right now I see I got a um I got a flood on the FTG so that I figured that was more than enough for me so I don't have to really bother with the FTG anymore. He's in a crossfire with the Rupert, Johan de Witt, Massachusetts, Kagero, right? So I could just leave them to my teammates. 
I don't have to worry about them anymore. I would much rather help out my losing side, which is Decap. Because they desperately need help. I spot the Wooster here, and so I ping him to get my to get my any ships that can really focus him down. Because once he goes down, then this game is pretty much won. He's the biggest threat to me. Maybe not so much to my teammates, but biggest threat to me. And if I can't get my my planes into their side of the map, then I won't be able to become of any use. I can't spot anything. Their Hakuryu is going to be doing all the work, right? He, he's going to be having more of an impact than I will. So that's why I go for this strike on the Worcester. And that looks good. Double Citadels, which is huge for getting, getting on a light cruiser. And so I decided to play more aggressively because this is, you know, this can, um, this can still be anyone's game. The Bismarck is pushing it in and he's getting blapped by HE from literally everyone. Um, so I, because I noticed that my heal is going to be coming back up soon, my last heal, and I'm going to need as much planes as possible here. So I just send, I just full send it and try to get that Worcester down. And so we see here, prepping up the strike. <clears throat> but yeah, um, try to when you are playing a ship like Hakuryu, you know, don't try to go for insane damage numbers or try to line up, you know, everything so perfectly. Just play the game, but focus mainly on target prioritiz um target prioritization. Sorry, I can't speak right now. I just woke up. Uh, and also trying to trying to keep track of your torpedo bomber's heal. Right. Notice here, I did I did have the heal. I went in with full strikes. This is my second strike off, but I, I I only have one more strike left. This is how easily Hakuryu can lose planes, right? And now I only have six planes in my reserves. And that is why I have been pre-dropping. That's why I like to pre-drop a lot, because if I didn't pre-drop a lot, I, really, I would have just thrown planes away for no reason. And they wouldn't have been done... They, they wouldn't have done anything for me, but just be there for the potential getting of another strike off. And I really don't like to play like that. I like to play more conservative as a as a carrier, um, mainly for the late game. Now this game is pretty much won. Now we have the snowballing effect going on. Once that Wusser and the Musfall went down, and then you know, like the FDG in mid, he was alone, and so he got caught out and he died for free. So all that kind of stuff literally just snowballs, and this is pretty much going to be our win. So we're just going to be farming as fast as possible, and this is pretty much the win. As you notice here, I didn't really have to focus out the destroyers as often this game. And that's because the destroyers didn't really do much at all because I killed their support, which is the Ibuki. Uh, Worcester died later on. The On this side, the Akisuki had Worcester must fall Salem. And he did stay alive to the very end of the, the destroyer, but they couldn't really provide any type of support because my team was always kiting away. So if the, if, if the destroyer has support but the enemy team is kiting away, nothing really dies. Which is a very good play on our team. And all, all we give up is just cap control that we can, we, we can take the cap back later on once the, once the, um, the opening you know, arises. Uh, but mainly what really made us win this game was the snowballing effect of early game. Right, finding this this NC pushing in, not able to turn away because imagine this, we caught him out right here, right? We spotted him right here, and he was already sucked bow in, and just because because we were here, we didn't even have to look, you know, we didn't have to strike him or anything because we sent our planes on this side and he positioned right here. This allowed us to only spot the guy and also threaten him so he couldn't turn away at all he's stuck in this position stuck bow in and because i dropped my fighters here whenever even though i leave you know i send my squadron back focus the other side he's still gonna get spotted because of that so that's another thing i want to talk about using your fighters a lot of times people use fighters to defend off um enemy carrier strikes but majority of the time that what you want to be doing is Really using your your fighters for spotting, because you only have control of one flight now in the in the rework state, right? It's been like that for for a few years, and what you want to do is use your fighters as a spotting tool, so that when you send your planes back, you're still providing spotting, um, indirect spotting with your one consumable. 
And these guys last 45 seconds, well, one minute, 45 sec, you know, 45 seconds, something like that. It's a very long spotting tool that you can do, you can help your destroyers out without, you know, them threatening themselves. And because we caught this NC out of position, she can't turn. She's stuck like this. She gets hammered by all of our ships. Oh, we just move forward. Um, she's stuck like this and she just dies, right? And then the, the Ibuki, we caught her out before. And then we, we catch her out again here. She's flooding and then we land a, a double torpedo hit here. And then we kill her with the following shot with our AP bombers. So you want to really you know, focus on things like that. Like who can you strike to uh, make the biggest impact? For me, it was focusing the Mosfa. Worcester, Salem, and then also the Ibuki. Um, battleships, farming battleships can come later if they allow you to push in. Because battleships have the highest HP pool, right, usually, and the highest armor, the highest amount of take the tanking capability. So they're not really easy to take out of the picture, especially because once you get your strikes done and over with, they could just DCP, and then they can pop a heal, and then they can go dark. So what that means is by the time you send your next squadron out to find that battleship again, they're going to be back up maybe like 20k HP, right? Back up to at least half HP. Which is very annoying because especially if you're playing something like an Audacious or uh, Immelman, for example, a lot of that damage that you deal and you spend your precious time on is pretty much wasted because they could just heal it all back and pretend like nothing ever happened. So instead of focusing that battleship very early on, what you can do is kill off the battleship's pawns, all of his cruisers, his support, his, his surrounding destroyers. And once you remove his support, they won't be able to do anything at all, right? Ibuki here is dead. North Carolina is stuck. The other North Carolina is stuck bow in here and he can't do anything. He's just, he's just a sitting duck at this point. And with Rumi, removing the, uh, the cruisers allows the destroyers to push up, which also allows the cruisers to push up, right? And if the destroyer is able to spot the incoming threat, which is torpedoes from the other, the other uh, destroyers, then the battleship can also move up. So it's just a big snowball effect from there. And a lot of people don't really seem to realize that how, how snowball-y World of Warships is. Like one ship, losing one ship on your flank can really throw off the entire game. Just because that one that one player decided to show broadside, get nuked or misposition, uh, push too far forward, right? So that's one thing that you want to also remember. And it's not it's not always about who can I farm the best, who can I, you know, who can I really annoy today, but more of who can I strike to threaten them for the rest of the game. Right, so here I spot out the um I spot out the Worcester, I spot out the the Salem later on over here. Right? But imagine imagine if if the Mosfa was positioned by this island, which is right here, where this where the Salem's old icon was. What if he was positioned right here? What this means is if he's positioned right here, we can really hurt hurt the guy. Right? As I said in the beginning of the video. If we focus, you know, Moss Fa is a is an insanely tanky ship. But if you perma spot him with your destroyer or with your carrier, like you don't even have to be sending your squadron out. You could just drop a fighter. And if you if you perma lit this guy, he's gonna really suffer because he can't do anything, and you know his ship is very vulnerable to to being nuked when showing broadside. So a lot of things to take from this video are target prioritization, who you're going to be focusing. In the very beginning, I immediately wanted to focus down the cruisers because this is the easiest way for us to win the game. It doesn't matter what the battleships are. They're just there to exist. They're there to threaten your ships and not you. So you don't really have to focus them. They do provide the biggest damage number. And if you want to take that risk of hunting down battleships as a carrier instead of focusing out the cruisers, be my guest. That's just not how I like to play. I usually like to focus on cruisers, destroyers, and then farm the battleships at the very end once we secure the game. And um, you know, picking your picking the right targets right from the beginning is very important, and it can pretty much swing the game in your favor almost immediately. Yeah. Um, next thing is from this video, more of a carrier specific 
is going to be the Hakuryu s heal. Hakuryu, Shokaku, and even the Sekiryu is going to have the same 2 minute cooldown heal、uh, versus the usual 3 minutes that other carriers have. And this is also why some people like to run consumable mod on the Hakuryu、uh, for the insanely long heal timer of, I, I believe, 8.5 seconds duration on the heal, which is really strong in itself, right? And so you can really pull that off with, with Hakuryu very easily.、Um, But yeah, it's pretty much just knowing how to play the game, like how, just predicting how the match is going to be played out, right? How it's going to be going,、um, just from your few initial strikes, and then just going, through, going and spotting who is, who is heading to where.、Um, that will give you more than enough information and your teammates' information、um, of how, to, how they can position as well. Because with my first strike, I immediately noticed that the, that the Ibuki and the North Carolina were together. Removing these ships will be very easy and also very beneficial. So I was gonna see here, I was gonna go after the Ibuki and the North Carolina again, but my fighter spot out the Worcester. That's why I, I actually gave up some time to send my planes over and spot the Worcester again for my team to have information on him. Potentially getting a salvo off. If they did, then that would be a really good example to show. But、um, I do drop my fighters a little too close, too early, and so I don't get to perma spot him. But I didn't want to give up too much of my plane's HP over to the Worcester for no reason. And so he does get spotted and then he goes dark, but that's fine. But now I noticed, you know, North Carolina is pushing up, and then it's just, just you know, we're just going back to the, what we talked about before of、um, threatening, indirectly threatening ships without you realizing it. Just because of how strong your spotting is in this game. How much spotting damage do they even get, by the way? I get how much? 30k spotting. At the very end, it's, yeah, 40k, 43k. So that's a lot of spotting damage.、Um, sometimes you can even reach like 80k if you, if you place a fighter down and there's non stop like salvos going off and your teammates are hitting.、Um, but. Yeah, I mean, this is pretty much just me talking over this video and trying to explain my thought process, but this is just how, honestly, how I play carriers in general.、Um, doesn't matter which carrier it is. So,、uh, so yeah, that, that's, that's pretty much the end of it. If you want to watch the original video, I did upload it、um, before, like a couple days ago. So, so、uh, check that out if you want to、uh, take a look at the full game. But,、um, but yeah, I hope that this, that this helped. I want to do more videos like this later on.、Um, trying to go over, like, if you guys have any questions of like, how I should be doing this, why do I do this, or just any topic, really, you know, just let me know in the comments and I can make a video on it. And I, what I really want to be trying to go for is making this new series more so like a replacement or a redo of my old CV Academy videos. Because CV Academy, as you guys know, is very outdated now. Even though it is, but you know, a lot of the tips that I do give there is, is very,、um, is, it still fits with this current stage of r e r a carriers because not much has changed, but it's still very、really、old, right? So I feel like this would be a good, a, a good step in the right direction of trying to、um, provide a update to the CV Academy videos, but not calling a CV Academy.、Um, just, I feel like doing this would be a lot better, a lot easier for me too, and、um, hopefully more. More helpful to you guys out there who do want to play carriers and you know are struggling with a, a certain thing, right? So, if you do have any suggestions, you do have any questions,、um, feel free to ask in the comments. I'll try my best to go through it because I want to what I really want to do is is make it so that each topic or each question that I'm trying to answer will be in its own video. I feel like that'll be a really good thing to do. I can provide a lot of videos that way, I can go very in depth with each topic. so That's, that's what I'm trying to go for with,、um, with this type of new, a new setup that I'm doing. So, but yeah,、uh, if you do have any suggestions, questions, or you, you just want to talk about this video or any future video, just let me know in the comments. And then I'll be, you know, I, read, I read comments every day, every couple hours, actually. So just let me know.、Uh, but yeah, hope you guys enjoy the video. My name is Ray. I'll be heading out now. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.